Korea students. This is Devam Shah from NG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Again, we continue with the same subject which is called Basic Electrical Engineering. Right? So, in our previous session, we have discussed about the Thevenin theorem. Right? So, before we start our next theorem which is called the Northern theorem, we need to understand the basic of network. Now, this is the same slide that we have discussed in our last session during the Thevenin theorem. So, uh, we already discussed the Thevenin theorem. Our next topic is the Northern theorem. So, in this particular uh, part, uh, we are going to cover total uh, uh, circuit theorems, uh, Thevenin theorem, Northern theorem and superposition theorem. So, as, uh, as per uh, why we are learning these theorems that we, once we design the circuit, then we have to analyze the circuit. So, once we analyze the circuit, then uh, let's say there are more number of uh, registers are connected uh, in a circuit along with the uh, um, various uh, um, kinds of voltage sources and current source dependent and independent. So, ultimately uh, for a particular resistance, if we want to find a voltage drop or a current is passing through that particular resistance, we can find uh, uh, using various ways, uh, various methods. So, those methods we define in terms of the circuit theorem. So, first part, Thevenin theorem we already discussed. Now, today, in our today's session, we are going to discuss about Norton's theorem. Right. So, uh, once we learn the circuit theorem, then we have to go for a circuit analysis. The two kinds of analysis we are going to learn with one is called the nodal analysis, another one is called the mass analysis. So, first let's start with uh, basics of the uh, network where uh, the one particular network or uh, you can consider as a circuit, the different parts of the circuit. So, uh, what is the circuit itself? So, a path through which the current flows or intent to flow is defined as a circuit. So, current must follow the closed path, it's called the circuit. So, you can see the, uh, this is the example of the circuit here. After that, we need to understand what is the node. So, node or junction is nothing but a point where uh, two or more more elements are connected together is called as a node. So, in another sense, you can also consider as a, a point where three or more than three branches are connected. Uh, at that particular point, we define as a node, right? Here, uh, so you can see here there is a node. Uh, at the point where three resistances are connected, R1, R2 and R3, so there are three branches are connected. Now, what do you mean that a branch where a part of the circuit or a network which lies between uh, nodes or junction points, right? So, ultimately, you can define here these are the branch where there are three branches, maybe more branches, and each and every branch must consider a single element at least, as well as if you are going to connect to more elements, all those elements must be in a series combination, right? Next part is for the loop. Right. So, a closed path in a circuit or a network is defined as a closed path. Right. So, for a circuit, closed close path is must or you can consider this is for a mesh. Right. So, uh, these are the basics of uh, uh, network. You need to understand why this all the words uh, you are some, um, somehow you are going to utilize uh, in your uh, theorem. Right. So, first uh, we will uh, we'll start with the uh, uh, northern theorem. So, it's nothing but the dual of uh, Thevenin theorem. So, if you know the Thevenin theorem, you can be able to understand the uh, Northern theorem. Now, what is the statement? So, any linear, bilinear, or TNT network uh, with two output terminals can be replaced by the current source, which is called a short circuit current source, ISC, in parallel with a single equivalent resistance between uh, these terminals A and B, as shown in figure. So, you can see here. Uh, in this particular uh, figure, there is a given network is uh, there, where there are two terminals A and B, where RF is connected. So, you have to reduce the big given network or linear or active network into a one current source, which is called uh, ISC, in parallel with the equivalent resistance. Right. So both both are in parallel, and then you have to connect your actual R. Right. So here. Uh, the ISC is nothing but the Norton equivalent current source where if you remove the RL at the initial part then you have to make it that particular terminal A and B are short and whatever current which is passing through terminal A and B that is defined as 
define is your short circuit current right same way r is called the norton equivalent resistance now this is the same resistance and same uh, we are using the same method that what we have used in a thevenin theorem by that way you can also find the thevenin equivalent resistance or it is also defined as a norton equivalent resistance right now uh, here you can see here the, the complete active network is converted into a two component one is called isc another one is called rn and both are in a parallel then you you can connect your low resistance where actual current which is passing through rn that current is i right so here there are uh say there are four steps to solve this network here so my first step is always like remove the rl first and then uh between terminal a and b and make that terminal a and b short right so by that way whatever current which is passing through this terminal a and b that is defined as a short circuit current isc my next job is to find isc then uh using kvm acl voltage divider current divider step number 3 that uh, again i have to find the resistance rn or you can consider as a rdh by making all voltage shown is short and all current source is open right then step number 4 i have to find the il current uh, passing through resistor rl so that il you can find using a current divider tool so here the equation you have to follow is il right so if you if you can see our previous uh, design where you can find the value of il using the current divider rule that is equal to the opposite direction of resistance which is rn divided by rn plus rl into the total flowing current which is called a isc so here again i am going to repeat the equation of il is equal to rn divided by rn plus rl into isc right by that way you can find the uh, load current now let's uh, define one example so this is what the actual uh, circuit there is r1 r2 r3 is given rn is also given that is between terminal uh, a and b so what i will do i have to use my first step that's why discuss that matter which is uh, step number 1 and remove the rn and short the current a and b then find out isc uh, and then how you can find the isc is just find the total resistance of the network so for this particular circuit you can find your total resistance rt is equal to r1 plus the parallel combination of r2 and r3 right uh, then you have to find the circuit current i that is equal to e by r and from then you can find is is equal to i into r2 divided by r2 plus r3 right? then you can see the second network from here uh, next part when uh, you, you have to use the step number 3 where your next job is to find the equivalent resistance you can consider as a rn or rth where you can find from this network as rn is nothing but r1 parallel r2 plus r3 so here you have to look from the terminal a and b here you have to look from the terminal a and b and then you can see here r1 and r2 both are in parallel in series with the r3 right so that would be your equivalent resistance you can check here and then you have to finally find the current which is passing through the load resistor rn so that uh you can see here from this isc rn and then you can connect your rn that is here il is passing through the rn so the il is nothing but isc into rn divided by rn plus rn that part we have already discussed so this is what the uh, different steps uh to find uh, or to analyze any circuit Uh, using the northern theorem now let's say one of the example where uh, you have applied one fitting wall uh, and there are three resistances are connected uh, 10 ohm 10 ohm and 5 ohm and the uh, one more resistance which is connected into terminal a and b is a 5 ohm that you consider yours r that's a load resistor right so my next job is to find the current which is passing through terminal a and b that the that current i define as a short circuit current which is called a isc right so here you can define this current as isc current So my first part is to remove the R and short the terminal A and B. From that you can find the ISC, which is uh, short circuit current. Before that you have to find the total resistance of the network. So once you look from 120 volt supply, then here uh, 10 and 5 volt, uh, 10 ohm and 5 ohm. These two resistances are in parallel with the 10 ohm uh, resistance in series. So by that way you can be able to find 13.33 ohm. Which is your total resistance of the circuit? From there, you can find the current, uh, the total current of the circuit, which is uh, uh, passing through 10 ohm resistance, that is 9 ampere. And from there, you can find, you can be able to find the ISC uh, uh, using current divider rule. 
uh, you use this equation like i is equal to 9 m cube so 9 multiplied by 10 divided by 10 plus uh, 15 using the current divider uh, current divider rule you can find uh, the value of is right so that is 6 ampere now is is 6 ampere my next job is to find the equivalent resistance rn that rn you can find uh, by making all voltage sources short and all current sources open. So in this particular network, uh, you are to make it 120 volt short, right? So when you once you take the once you make a 120 volt short here, right? That means you have to look from terminal A and B, and that's your equivalent resistance R, right? So from here you can see that 10 ohm and 10 ohm resistance are in parallel with. Uh, uh, 5 ohm resistance in series. So from that you can be able to find RL that will use 5 ohm. And finally you have to find, you have to connect RL between terminal A and B and uh, you have to find the load current IL which is passing through RL. So by this equation IL is equal to ISC RL divided by RL plus RL. The same equation, uh, you put the value then you can find 4 m paper. So this is one of the example based on all these 4 steps. Again, we are going to repeat the same example that we have discussed uh, during the uh, happening here. You can see this, where there are two uh, voltage sources, 10 volt, 20 volt, 3 resistances, 10, 10 and uh, 14 ohm, where again you have to remove the RL and you have to make A and B short. So you can make A and B short and uh, through A and B, whatever current which is passing through that current is ISC current. So my next job is to find ISC current. So, if I am looking for my ISC current, I have to find total circuit resistance, um, then total circuit current. From that, I can be able to find ISC by using the current divider rule. So, quickly you can see here, you can find, uh, see here, we have used one of the important theorem that is called the source transformation theorem. Not the complete theorem, but we just use the equation that is called the source transformation. So, what I have done, I have done here from uh, 10 ohm to 10 ohm, 10 volt to 10 ohm, and here uh, uh, you can see a 20 volt to 10 ohm. These two uh, are the voltage source. So one voltage source in series with the resistance I have converted into a current source. So voltage divided by resistance, that you can uh, find the current, and that current is called the ohms, uh, based on the ohms. Law. So that I is equal to V by R. So I want 10 divided by 10. So one ampere uh, current. So you can see this uh, this, this particular circuit when one uh, ampere current is there, and uh, whatever resistance in series here, you just uh, you know find the current source. So that 10 volt divided by 10 ohm. So that's a one ampere current. Again, same here, 20 volt divided by 10 is a two ampere current. So ultimately, these two currents are passing through 10 ohm and 10 ohm, right? So you can also utilize this. Uh, I mean, you can simplify this network by that way, or you can also use some uh, voltage divider method here, and you can find, or current divider method here, you can find uh, ISC. So, by this way, you can also find the so total ISC that would be uh, 1 ampere current and 2 ampere current. These two are ultimately uh, meeting at the uh, terminal A and B, right? So, my ISC current would be 1 ampere plus 2 ampere, so that would be a 3 ampere. So, from this, I can be able to find. The uh, equivalent resistance, which is called uh, RN, to make this these two uh, voltage sources, you have to make it a short. So ultimately, voltage source becomes zero. So here, from RN, from this particular network, you can see RN is looking for terminal A and B, where two resistances 10 ohm and 10 ohm both are in a parallel with each other. So from this RN is parallel uh, combination of 10 and 10, you can uh, find the value of 5. So. So ultimately the Norton equivalent you can see here, 3 ampere ISC, then RN is 5 and now I have to connect the RL that is called the 4 ohm. Right, so from this you can straight away, see this is the current source that is a part of the Norton theorem. Then using the source transformation you can convert into a voltage source. So that uh, the next equivalent circuit we will define the heavily here. Right, so here you can either use uh, Current divider rule or straight away you can uh, find the uh, value of IL that is equal to 15 divided by 5 plus 40 using the Thevenin. That is also possible, but since it is a uh, it is a simplified network, so you can either you know uh, uh, both the equation. I mean, you can use either equation. You can find the value of uh, IN, which is uh, uh, IN or IL, which is nothing but 0.33 ampere, which is which is the current passing through the 4 ohm resistance, right? So. The most important part is here how you can relate both Norton and 
having it. So ultimately having a theorem says that any network can be represented or can be converted into a voltage source and in series resistance. Right. Same way, Norton says the same thing, but in terms of the current source. So any network in a Norton theorem says that same network can be represented by a current and in shunt with the resistance. Right. So ultimately, this shows the source transformation of every theorem. It becomes the Norton theorem. Simple. Right. So that's terminology we define as the source transformation. This is simply both the way conversion is possible. You can see uh, from this, this is also a basic example of the source transformation where 15 volt uh, vertex is source is that in series with the 3 ohm resistance. So this is, this is defined as a voltage source. Now I need to convert this voltage source into current source. So 15 divided by 3. So it's a 5 ampere current source which is in opposite direction, uh, I mean up direction. Because the 15 volt is a plus and minus here, the first circuit. Same with 3 ohm resistance in series with the voltage source, the, that the same 3 volt resistance you have to connect in a parallel with the current source, right? So that's called the source transformation. So ultimately, here Norton is nothing but the source transformation of Thevenin and vice versa. So Thevenin is more related to the voltage source and Norton is a more related to the current source. So, thank you very much, uh, dear students. If you have any question, you can write in the comment box. Thank you very much.